Good morning and welcome to worship here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Parker's Prairie, Minnesota. I'm Pastor Mark Schwarz and I'm blessed to uh, share the Word of God with you today. Today, on our fifth Sunday after Pentecost, we focus on the Gospel lesson where Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's a thing we all probably need at this time. And so we give thanks for Jesus' words here and what, for what that means for our lives. We begin with our opening hymn, hymn 966, Before You, Lord, We Bow. Hymn 966, Before You, Lord, We Bow. Before you, Lord, we bow, our God who reigns above and rules the world below, boundless in power and love. Our thanks we bring in joy and praise, our hearts we raise to you. King, the nation you have blessed may well your love declare from foes and fears at rest, protected by your cares. For this bright day, for this fair land, gifts of your hand, our thanks we pay. May every mountain height, each vale and forest glare, from foes and fears at rest, protect its fruits be seen. May every tongue be tuned to praise and join to raise a grateful song. Earth, hear your Maker's voice, your great Redeemer own. Believe, obey, rejoice, and worship Him alone. Cast down your pride, your sin and poor and bow before the crucified. And when in power He comes, O oh, may our native land from all its rending tombs send forth a glorious band, a countless throng with joy to you sing to the vent king salvation song. We begin our worship today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. 
Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Continue with the words of the intro. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and will be forever. Amen. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. We continue with our hymn of praise. This is the feast. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, your mercy attends us all our days. Be our strength and support amid the wearisome changes of this world. And at life's end grant us your, your promise rest and the full joys of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Our Old Testament lesson for today comes from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation as he, humbled and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and, and, the, and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson for today comes from Romans chapter 7. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who, li who do it, but sin who dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, and that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being. But I see in my members another law, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells, with it within, dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and, and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue our service confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We continue with hymn 684, Come unto me, ye weary. Hymn 684. Come unto me, ye will. 
I will give you rest. O blessed voice of Jesus, which comes to hearts oppressed, it has a benediction of pardon, grace, and peace, of joy that hath no ending, of love that cannot cease. Come unto me, ye wanderers, and I will give you light. O loving voice of Jesus, which comes to cheer the night, our hearts were filled with sadness, and we had lost our way. But thou hast brought us gladness and songs at break of day. Come unto me, ye fainting, and I will give you life. O cheering voice of Jesus, which comes to aid our strife, the foe is stern and eager, the fight is fierce and long, but thou hast made us mighty and stronger than the strong. And whosoever cometh, I will not cast him out. O patient love of Jesus, which drives away our doubt, which though we be unworthy of love so great and free, invites us very sinners to come, dear Lord, to Thee. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. If you've watched a little bit of the news or watched TV or been on the internet at all, you've heard these phrases. These have become typical phrases that we hear on a daily basis. These are unprecedented times. Things are changing faster now than they ever have before. Violence is breaking out in all of our cities. There's flooding. There's a huge dust storm that came from Africa and affected our country. There's all these things going on in the world, and that doesn't even mention the coronavirus and all the things that have happened because of that. You see, Jesus has a message for us today. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I was thinking, I've been thinking about that a lot this week. Come to me and I will give you rest. I was thinking about it in the sense of our world and what's going on. I was thinking about it in my own life and what does that mean for me to have rest in Jesus? Not just physical rest or not just a rest from work, but what does it mean to rest in Jesus? Sometimes all of this stuff that goes on in our world becomes exhausting. We get sick. I've heard multiple people say, I'm sick of hearing about everything. I just want things to go back to normal. And many times we, we hear that or we say, man, I, could, I wish we could just go back or I wish we could skip this year and, and go on. But here we are in the midst of our world. We can't go back. We can't go forward. We're here in this moment. God has called us to be here for a reason. But what does it mean to, to listen to Jesus and to, to get our rest from him? 
Before the coronavirus, we were all running on empty in a different way. We were running back and forth to activities. We were doing things to keep us busy. We were studying really hard. We were going to sporting events. We were watching plays or watching TV. And then all of a sudden, all those things were taken away. And now we're tired for a different reason. All these things have taken a toll on people. All these events that have gone on have taken their toll. And sometimes it feels really exhausting. In having conversations with people, we want to have answers to all of this, right? We want to know why this is happening. And we want to, we want to have the answer to say, if we just do this, everything's going to be better. Unfortunately, we're, none of us can see into the future to know what's going to make it better. And there's probably not just one quick a answer to all of this. But maybe there is. Maybe in Christ's words there is. We've been in the Gospel of Matthew this summer and, and studying Jesus' words in the Gospel of Matthew. And the, the Gospel lesson for today came from Matthew chapter 11. But when we look back and we get the full context of, of, of Jesus' Jesus's invitation to us to come to him for rest, we, we, there's a much bigger picture going on. In, in chapter 10, in, in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus talks about how he, he, how he came to, to bring a sword and not peace. And how families will be divided. And these are words that we don't like to think about of Jesus. We don't like to hear this Jesus. We don't always want to read these words. But that's what Jesus says. He comes. Why? Because many of us have people in our families who don't believe in Jesus and who, who, who divide families because of that. And some of us hold true to that faith in Christ that we have. And the Holy Spirit blesses us with that faith. But sometimes there's divisions in our family, in our friends, in the media, and in the world. And Christ said that that would happen. And then in, in chapter 11, he goes on. And he talks about the cities where he's gone. And he talks about, and he says, Woe to the unrepentant cities. Woe to those who have seen Jesus' miracles, and yet they don't believe. It would be better for them to have lived in Sodom in the Old Testament because their ultimate destination is hell. And see, we, I don't like this Jesus a lot of times when I read through the Bible. It makes me uncomfortable. I want to I hear about the Jesus that loves me. I want to hear about the Jesus who, who came to die for my sins. I want to hear about the, the Jesus that, that was born in a manger and that all was calm and that there was no, he didn't make any crying. But you see, that's not just who Jesus was. Jesus was also someone who said, I am God's son. And I am here for a mission. I'm here to do what he tells me to do. In fact, he prayed those words on, on, on Monday Thursday, the evening when he was in the Garden of Eden. And he said, Father, take this cup of suffering from me, but not my will, but thy will be done. And so we look at this Jesus and we think, man, this is really difficult. This is this is the Jesus that we don't always like to talk about or that we don't always like to hear. But then we get to the end of chapter 11. And in the midst of all of this, and in the midst of all the things that Jesus has just talked about, he says this. He says, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal to him. And then he says these words, Come to me, all you who weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my yoke, take my yoke upon you, for 
and learn from it. I, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You will find rest for your souls. Then he goes on to say, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You will find rest for your souls. Those words really hit me as I was thinking about them and, 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 and reading this text this week. Because the invitation is there from Jesus. Come to me, you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come. It's an invitation. And how often do we think about that invitation and we say, well, I'm going to watch an hour or two of Netflix instead, or I'm going to go and, and do something to distract myself in another way, and I'm going to do something different. And we forget to go to God and we forget to read his word. We forget to hear the promises that he has for us. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's what Jesus invites us to do. And see, the great thing about Jesus is that when we look at the Gospels, and when he travels and he goes to places, he sees the people who, who we might just pass by, or who might have just been passed by in those times. He sees the ten, the ten men with lepers who are on the outside of the city, and as, the, as he gets close to them, they shout out that they're lepers and that he needs to, to keep his distance. But what does he do? He, he, he tells them, go and show yourself to the priest, outcasts, people who weren't able to be around their family. And as they go, show themselves to the priests, they're healed. Or Jesus goes to, to a man who lived in the tombs and was, was possessed by demons. And those demons then were cast out into the pigs and the pigs went over the hill. And that man was forever grateful to Jesus because he was no longer an outcast. He had a tax collector as one of his disciples. The tax collectors weren't looked at very highly. Zacchaeus was up in a tree to see who Jesus was, a tax collector himself. And out of the crowd of people that day, Jesus looked at the tax collector who was in the tree and he said, come, I'm going, to have a, I'm going to come to your house. And at the end of the story with Zacchaeus, Jesus says, I have come to seek and save the lost. Wow. Jesus comes for those who are weary and heavy laden. Jesus comes to save those who need rest. Jesus comes to save his people. And you see, when, when we realize who are the weary and heavy laden, it doesn't take long for us to realize that that's me. I'm the weary and heavy laden. I'm the one who needs rest. You're the one who needs rest. You're the one who's weary and heavy laden. Because we all carry this burden of sin. We all carry that burden of sin that, Jesus, that, that was brought to us from, from our parents and from their parents and all the way back from Adam and Eve. And we take that yoke of sin and we give it to Christ. And he gives us the yoke that is easy and light. He gives us the, the, the gift of forgiveness of sins, knowing that we have a God who loves us, knowing that he was the one who sacrificed himself for our sins, knowing that he's the one who saves us. What a huge blessing that is to know that Jesus Christ loves you. And he came to die for you. And he says to you today, come to me and I will give you rest. And I'm not just talking about a rest that, that's a, a nap on the couch during the day. Or I'm not just talking about a rest where you sit on the, the beach and, and listen to the waves roll in off the lake. I'm talking about a rest that can only come from the God of the universe. Paul talks about that in, in our epistle lesson for today. He talks about the burden of the law sometimes and how the good things that we want to do, we don't do those things. And, and the, the good things that we do want to do, well, we don't end up doing those things. 
And he talks, he's, he talks about that burden of the law sometimes. And the law shows us our sin. And it shows us that we need a Savior. And then we see Jesus' words. And he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I've had a lot of conversations with people the last month or so who are tired and who are heavy laden and weary and they just want things to be better. And I wish I had a better answer for you in this world. I don't in this world. But we have the hope of the the God who loves us. We have the hope of Jesus Christ, the hope of the eternal life that is to come and the life that is here and now. We have the, the, the hope that comes only in Jesus Christ. Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. We rejoice in the Lord. We rejoice knowing that we have a Savior. We rejoice in Him. Yeah, these are difficult times and, and we're tired. But we rejoice knowing that we have a faith in Jesus. We rejoice knowing that He saves us and He calls us to Him and He says, come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's a great promise, isn't it? That in the midst of the world, in the midst of all the things that are going on that that scare us, that, that bring division, Christ brings us to him. And he calls us to him. And he says in those words that that. Th- it's so simple that a, a child can understand it. And he calls those who are weary and heavy laden. Don't forget those words this week. Don't forget how he has touched our life. And don't forget how he has been the one who has saved us. He has called us his children. And he calls us today. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. In the name of Jesus Christ, our hope and our Savior. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the church. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day that you've given to us. And Lord, we we pray for for peace. We pray for wisdom. We pray for rest. Not just physical rest or emotional rest, but Lord, we pray for a spiritual rest. A rest that can only come from you. Lord, may we seek you in all that we say and do. And may we know your love in, in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we continue to pray for our nation. We give you thanks for, for the independence that we have, for the freedoms that you've given to us. Lord, and we thank you for the opportunity to, to celebrate those freedoms that you've given to us. Lord, may we give you thanks for the country that we live in, that we can so freely uh, worship you and, and praise your name. Lord, we pray for those around the world who are persecuted for their faith. And may they know of your presence with them, and may they know of your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for, for our, uh, the leaders of our nation, for our president, President Trump, for our governor, Governor Walls, and all the elected officials who serve us. We pray for uh, policemen, police women who serve us, police officers, and, and those who serve us in the military, Lord. We give you thanks for them and for the service that they give to us. And, Lord, may we uh, uphold them and, and may uh, we honor them in all that, all that we do. But Lord, above all, may, we, may they know that you are with them in the time of, of their service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for, for uh, calling us to be members of Emmanuel. But we pray for those who need your prayers and your comfort and your healing. Lord, we pray for Tim and Xander, for Donna and Marlis for Ron and Lois, for Hildegard and Jerry and Ron and Paul and Becky and Roxy and Rosamond and Lisa and Mary and Corey and Levi, Nettie, Cynthia, John, Sue, Shelby, 
and Roger and Mary and Carol, Lord, all of them, you know what's going on with them. And Lord, we pray for them. We pray for your healing and for your wisdom and for your patience with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for all those who have been impacted by COVID-19, those who are ill, those who have lost jobs or income, those in the health care, and those in the government. Lord, may you continue to, to uh, give the wisdom to the people who, who need your wisdom to find a cure for uh, this virus, Lord. And, and may, we, may we look to you to remember that you are with all of us during this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the gift of life, and we give you thanks for Audrey as she turns eight, turns, has her birthday this year. Lord, we give you thanks for her years of life in this world, and we pray that you will continue to bless her. Lord, we also pray for comfort for the family of Hank, Hank Engel, who died in a car accident, Lord. We pray for comfort for that family as well. Lord, we, we give you thanks for the rain we've had earlier this week, and we continue to pray for rain and for seasonable weather for our farmers. And we ask you to, to bless and guide our country uh, and all that's going on. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gift of pastors and those who, who share, share your word each and every day. Lord, we pray for Scott Brown as he will be ordained on July 5th. Lord, bless that day and, and bless his family and, and bless the ministry he has at both South Effington and Leaf Valley. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, Heavenly Father, and many other things that are in our hearts and minds, we lift up to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his eternal peace. Amen. We continue with our last hymn, hymn 965, God bless our native land. A couple of announcements for you uh, for today. We give thanks to Maureen and Michael and also to Yvonne for taping and all the, the people who help out with the services. We give you thanks for, for all that you do to serve us this way. A um, couple of announcements for this week. Uh, Wednesday, July 8th, there will be communion both at 2.30 and at or 2 o'clock, sorry, 2 o'clock and 7.30 um, in the evening. No appointment is necessary. If you want to come, you can come and uh, Pastor Lee will have communion. That's Wednesday at 2 o'clock and 7.30. 
Also, next Sunday, there'll be worship in, in the sanctuary, July 12th. And so you can join us inside. We'll have communion as well and, and, that, and all of that. So July 12th, in-house in, in, in worship. Also, there'll be drive-in worship every Sunday during the month of July as well. And finally, the last announcement I have for you on, on Sunday, July 5th, Scott Brown will be installed and ordained at Leaf Valley at 2 p.m. And then there'll be a, a reception to follow at South Effington. If you would like to join uh, for either one of those things, you are welcome to do that. So God's blessings on your week.